let's see. Poetry. Classical literature. Now, where could you be? Ah! Greek mythology. Marvellous. Uh, excuse me. Terribly sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but would you mind if I just uh, scooch past? I'm looking for a rather elusive text for my class. Thank you kindly. I won't be but a moment, and then I assure you I'll be out of your hair and leave you to your... Now wait a second. I never forget a face. And yours is bringing more than a few bells. Hmm, let's have a proper look at you. Apologies to intrude, but it may help shake the cobwebs from my old adult brain. <laughs> hmm, now where... Ah, but of course. I knew I remembered you from somewhere. My old student. It's been a long time. What? Two? Two and a half years? You look well. Older. Well, let's not say older. Perhaps wiser is a more accurate description. More distinguished. <laughs> oh no, the same can't be said about myself, I'm afraid. No, I, I very much got old. Teaching during a pandemic will do that to you, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I'm just pottering along, I'm afraid. Trying to find new ways to interest the future generations of students into literature. <sighs> Though admittedly... I'm not having the same success as I had with students past. Students like yourself. Speaking of, I trust that you're still keeping Hamlet near and dear to your heart. I'd certainly hope so after all the time we spent studying it in my office together. Hmm. Even after all this time, I still hold fond memories of our private lessons. When your mind was like a sponge, eagerly soaking in any lesson or nugget of wisdom that I could think of to impart, as you desperately tried to decide what kind of person you wanted to be. And to see you now, here, studying so hard of your own volition, I am confident that the part I played was a good one. Indeed, you are proceeding rapidly to the end of your scholarly journey, and the world unknown awaits you. May I ask, how does that make you feel? What emotions surface at the prospect of being cast out into the great unknown? Is it excitement? Wonder? Fear? A sense of hopelessness? There's no right answer. As I taught you, existence impacts us all differently. We all see what we want to when we stare up at the gargantuan and imposing edifice of creation of society. Some see a mountain to climb, others many high points from which to fall. But if I may, I'd like to give one last piece of advice. You're never going to feel ready to face the world. In truth, no one does, and there's no way to measure Readiness. It certainly isn't through any form of standardised education. Many of the most successful people on this planet didn't perform well in school. 
Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Henry Ford. Steve Jobs flunked out of college with a 2.6 GPA. Academic prowess and intelligence are two very different things. And both of them have very little to do with being ready for what life throws at you. That is something that comes only with experience and an inner thirst to learn from your mistakes. And let me assure you, you shall make mistakes. After all, Winston Churchill once said that no plan survives contact with the enemy. You're never going to get it right first time all the time. And that's all right. For whether after you left my class you went on to flourish academically, or whether afterwards your studies went on to stumble and falter, I would still be equally as proud of the person that I see before me. Because standardised education, with all its pop quizzes and tests and textbooks, all of that cannot teach the values and the moral fibre that I saw demonstrated from you in my class all those years ago. So be happy with where your trail has led you. Trust yourself to make the next step. And every so often, look back to who you were all those years ago in my class and allow yourself to feel pride. For no matter what direction your life took, you are better for it. <laughs> I seem to be getting sentimental in my old age. I still can't quite believe that it's been over two years since you sat in my class. I'll admit it certainly doesn't feel that long. Sometimes it's almost as if everything from 2020 has merged into one very long, very tedious year. But I'm reminded that time has passed when I look in the mirror and spot a new patch of grey hair that I could swear wasn't there yesterday. The inevitability of time, don't you think? <laughs> Even my lessons have changed. I no longer teach Shakespeare. I always knew this day would come, but I had hoped it wouldn't have been so soon. Not in my lifetime, in all honesty. But there's no demand for it now. But times change, and so must I. I actually run a creative writing class now. Yes, it's, it's quite fascinating, particularly with how creatively inclined the newer generations of students are. I get to expose them to the wonders of ancient poetry, of heroics, of mythology. And from that I get to watch the gears turn as the future Stephen Kings and Charles Dickenses of the world reveal themselves. I've actually spent my time trying to research the creative prowess of Gen Z, immersing myself in their online culture to see where such creativity stems from. My current working theory is that many Gen Z, and indeed late Millennials, are very creatively inclined as they have a tendency to create fantasies in their heads. Whether that be of pre-existing fictional characters, which they deem fandoms, and they can either be romantic or situational, or whether it be of their own original characters and stories. Yes, and I hypothesise that they create these fictional worlds and fictional lives through their shared disgust and dissatisfaction with their current one. 
In short, they create these fantasy worlds to escape the doom and gloom of this one. It truly is very fascinating. And a far healthier coping mechanism than previous generations who would bottle up their emotions unhealthily or undergo a midlife crisis or even drown themselves in alcohol, work or substances. I actually rather admire these storytellers, these authors who can find in a world so gloom the inspiration to create something beautiful. I actually have a student at the moment that reminds me of you. They're very good. Very good. Indeed, watching them write a story is like watching a craftsman at work. An experienced tailor. With words as their thread and paper their tapestry, they weave stories of such complexity, such magnificence. Indeed, I found myself recently submerged in their latest work, a tale which I believe they called The Mad King. But I won't bore you with that. If at any point you wish to partake in my class, even as an, an outside observer, you're more than welcome. But I shall allow you to return to your studies now. It was very nice to meet you, and I do hope that we see each other again. Hopefully sooner than two years from now. But if not, it's nice that we got to meet, if only for a little while. And I am very proud of the person you've become.